So I'm Holly Hardy and I'm going to read a few poems from my new book, How to Take a Bullet and Other Survival Poems. All of the titles in the collection have been ruthlessly appropriated from the worst case scenario survival handbook. So I'm going to read, the first one's called How to Survive a Drift at Sea. There are handprints all over your weekends, windows thrown wide to the night. The curve of loneliness renders strange fingers brushing your bare shoulder. You concoct an elixir of fire. Goldfish swim below the surface of sleep, unfurling the lantern sea until you can't stop dreaming the wet of it. You, sens you savor the sensation of drowning instead of writing. An impossible crush unfastens something that was neatly folded. Paper-thin panties hit the floor, dissolve into mint ice cream, the fragrance of another Wednesday night. But desire is never permanent, and something new inflates your lungs, vacating old beliefs. In the nick of time, in the nick of bone, in the bed of another lesson, in the unspoken, miles are traveled, and with these scissors, you can mend the holes. So this is how to fend off a shark. Wet fists in your eyes, the thump of undrumming, a figure in your peripheral vision. Here is the rind of night, facing off on a rock of ice, nightgown whipping, ragged around your thighs. Because silence is an expression of fear. Unwave that flag, unsmoke that cigarette, unfuck that friend, these desperate little fistfuls of defiance. This jazz song does not belong to you. Warm, the sensation of sleep. Threadbare, the quality of wishing. Because police are at the door again, this wrecking ball in your bedroom, this fresh fountain of silver in your hair. Blue, the function of smoke. Rumpled, the flavor of resistance. There are things that vanish unexpectedly. The stone talisman you carried for luck. Photographs burned in a fire. Bewildered, the pillow of regret. Because our experiences overlap, bodies at rest, hoarding dreams like stolen rainwater. Right. I'm going to read How to Avoid Breaking Through the Ice. The trick is to glide across the surface of life, like children skating a winter pond. Mittened hands clasped, cheeks and noses pink with cold, hearts pumping, exertion, exhilaration, as round and round they rush, avoiding the weak edges, threatening to break, open like thunder and plunge you into the deep. A light snow falls, flakes settle unnoticed on eyelashes, a fresh glaze of white erasing slim lines of barren forest, the silent hawk circling, brush strokes against the sky. In the distance, a curl of smoke grazes the air above your home. But you do not think of your mother, chopping wood, building the fire, working nights at the factory. You do not think of your father, somewhere far away, trying to sketch your face in his notebook, realizing he can no longer conjure your image, turning instead to the waitress, drawing the curve of her neck, the line of her hip, her apron. She is unaware of the secret, growing inside her, somewhere beneath the slippery surface in the frigid dark where life moves at its own pace. One more maybe? This one was from Sparkling Blink, I think. How to land a plane. It's the small things that hold us, handcuffs and leftover puzzle pieces, names like fences that keep us home. Always the stories are about freedom, how to disentangle, how to unglue. You are a kite on a frayed string. You are breakfast every morning. You are the voice of your mother quietly unscrewing the light bulb. You are the dog barking at strangers and skateboards. The city still beats at the heart of you. But the music of longing is melancholy. How can this grasping gesture reconcile the notion of impermanence? The door is open, and you can see the bright invitation of sun and sky. You are drawn to motion, like leaves unwinding the wind. Eventually, you will land somewhere.